So let's say you're building a thousand horsepower turbo LS combination. Do you need a T4 turbo or a T6 turbo? Let's find out. In this video, we compared a Borg Warner S480 turbo on a six liter LS. We ran both a T4 and a T6 hot side. Yeah, but did you run it at seven pounds like you normally? No, I didn't run it at seven pounds. Why don't you mind your own business? We know how to test. Not really. Did you run an electronic wastegate controller? No, we didn't have one, but we ran it at 12 pounds and almost a thousand horsepower. Ooh, almost a thousand horsepower. Are you getting big now? Was at least the AR on both of them the same? No, they had a 1.25 and they had a 1.1. That's all we had to now, test. Now, why don't you learn how to dyno Now, test? why don't you mind your own business? Now that I'm done arguing with myself, let's get to those results. We're going to take a look at a comparison between an a T4 turbo and a T6. And of course, we're talking about the hot side of the turbo. So obviously, we're going to increase the flow rate with the bigger T6 size. But what effect does that really have on power? And as you can see from this first graph, this is with the T4. We're testing it up near 950 horsepower, which is a pretty good amount. And it's not the maximum limit of this particular turbo. This was an S480 from Borg Warner, and we were sent basically two different size housings. Now, there's so much wrong with this test, and this will be awesome to hear all of the comments because the boost wasn't exactly the same. I mean, it was close. Uh, the ARs on the two hot sides on the T4 and the T6 weren't exactly the same. So it will be interesting to see. Does that mean that we're not going to learn anything from the results of this test? No, it actually means that, you know, we can, we can nitpick and complain, which is good, which is what the internet's all about. But it also means we can learn a great deal from this because, you know, there is a, there is this feeling out there that, you know, for, oh, for a thousand horsepower, I got to have that big T6 size turbo. And the reality is that that's not the case. Certainly in the thousand horsepower and below range, as this test will show, and lots of others that we've done, because we've done thousand horsepower stuff with T4 size turbos all the time. And that's really probably a better choice for that kind of application, especially if you're looking also for any kind of uh, better response for street applications and even more so for smaller turbos like a, or smaller engines with that turbo, like a 4.8 or a 5.3. In this case, this is a 6 liter. So let's get to this test and then we can all jump up and down and get our pitchforks and stuff. But this particular test was run on the, the Big Bang, the latest Big Bang. It was a Gen 4 LY6 originally, so a stock bottom end. It was an LY6 block and crank and rods and pistons. As I said, Gen 4 stuff, so it had the good rods in it. We did obviously have ring gap in this thing, so we were up around 30 thousandths on the ring gap. We also had a set of Trick Flow 225, the Gen X 225 heads. It had a BTR Stage 3 twin turbo cam. Uh, being very specific about our about our all cams or a turbo cam, especially a turbo cam. We had a Dorman LS6 intake manifold. I had my single turbo kit in. It was just basically the stock exhaust manifolds with a two and a half inch Y pipe. And this is actually, this test is the reason that I designed that Y pipe to have a three inch V-band so that we could go from a T4 to a T6 using these adapters that we made. So we had the adapters are basically just three inch V-bands going to either a T4 or a T6 or a T3. If we wanted to run a small T3 on this, we could also do that. We had uh, turbo smart wastegates on it. We had the, our Pro Charger air to water air cooler fed by dyno water. And then we had, unfortunately, and this is one of the problems, a manual wastegate controller. But the boost is actually very close on these two. But it does go to show you that um, there is a change when you change the hot side. And when you change the hot side, as we'll show, it changes back pressure, and that changes boost pressure, and yada, yada, yada. So on and on and on. But we ran this thing with uh, at 12 pounds which is, you know, that's not a lot of boost. And as you can see, it was it was going to make, it could have the possibility. We could have topped this turbo out easily on this motor because we'd already run 1,543 horsepower with two S475 turbos. And while we had this on the dyno, I also compared an S475 to an S480. I compared the different air to water versus air to air intercoolers. And as we'll see later on, I also did uh, ignition timing tests. So we did, we did a ton of stuff while we had this thing up on the dyno. But... <laughs> I digress. Run at 12 pounds our uh, S4, our S480 turbo, Borg Warner S480. This one actually belongs to David Freiberger, who loaned it to me for this test. Um, our S480 uh, T4 turbo with a, a 1.25 AR on the hot side, and this was a divided housing. Although our uh, discharger, the our, our Y pipe. Although it had a um, 
our our flange wasn't a it wasn't a divided flange, so it was just you know a common one open. So we weren't really taking advantage of what the what the twin scroll deal had to offer. So uh, run with the T4 at about 12 pounds. We made 942 horsepower and 817 foot pounds of torque. So let's take a look and see what happened after we swapped over to the T6 housing. Now the T6 housing um, was supplied by the guys over at LJMS and this was what they had. Ideally it would have been good to have the same AR for both for this test, but they had a, um, this AR on the T6 was a, a 110, a 1.1 basically. And that's as close as we could get to being the same. Also, if you take a look, I'll show a, a photo here. The, the hot side, the exhaust, the outlet side, the discharge side, the flange for that was much bigger on the T6 because it's bigger and everything needs to be bigger. But the, the peak power number was 953 on the T6 and the peak torque was 820 foot pounds. As you can see, if you look at the curves, these are all but identical. There's a little bit of a difference at the very top, you know, above 6,000 RPM. But as we'll see, that's basically a difference in because we were using a manual wastegate controller. Then there's a difference basically in the boost pressure supplied by the two. So this really isn't an uh, the T6 versus T4, but we'll take a look and see the boost pressure and the back pressure differences on these, and we can kind of talk a little bit about that. So on our T4 versus T6 compa comparison, I also logged boost pressure and back pressure when we ran both of those combinations also, uh, obviously, but here is the boost pressure versus back pressure on the T4. So you can see at about uh, 12 pounds, 12.1 pounds, we had a peak of 18.8 uh, pounds of back pressure. So we had about one and a half to one or so on the boost pressure versus back pressure. And you can see it actually had less back pressure than boost pressure below 4,300 RPM. So this will be a good comparison to find out if we had a drop in back pressure with the bigger T6 turbo housing. So here's our T6. And as you can see, there wasn't a big difference between the boost pressure and back pressure. These curves are very, very similar. Um, this big dip that you're seeing here at 6,000 on the T4 is just an anomaly in the, in, in the way that it gathered the data. Um, if you look at the, the vast majority of the curve, we had a little bit more boost, uh, as I said, because we're controlling it with a manual wastegate controller. And when I say a little bit, we're talking about, let's see, that was 11.8. We have 11.7 versus 11.9, 11.8 versus 12.1. So between two tenths and three tenths of a pound, not a lot, but enough to make some power difference. And the trend that we're seeing here, if you take a look at it, is that the bigger T6 made a little bit more power out at the top. It had a little bit less back pressure out at the top. It also made a little bit less boost down low. So the response rate, so again, not anything, you know, out of the ordinary. We would expect that uh, on a bigger housing like that, um, even though the AR was a little bit tighter on the T6. So that's kind of offsetting things a little bit. But the bigger T6 is going to be less responsive than the T4 is. The T4 is going to be more responsive, but maybe make a little bit less power at the top. And again, that's only if, and here's the thing, it's obvious from this thousand horsepower range that Either one of these turbos will do what we need to do. The T4 probably ultimately would be a better choice. It would be more responsive. It has still has enough exhaust flow as seen by the back pressure and boost pressure relationships. It can definitely support, especially this S480, it can support this power level. It can support a higher power level. You don't really need the T6 on this kind of application where you might, and this is the important thing, if you're looking for a T4 versus a T6, when do I use the T6 kind of thing? Well, you need it when you're running all of the turbo. So if you're going to try to max out an S480, which, you know, obviously a six liter can easily do. And if you're going to run it on a six liter, I would lean more toward the T6, especially if you're trying to max it out. If you're trying to do a 4.8 liter, I would actually recommend a T4, even if you're going to max out the S480, because I think you'll be able to do that on the 4.8 liter. Um, on this six liter, the T6, if you're trying to get everything out of it, then you'll need a lot of exhaust flow because on a six liter, you'll probably reach the flow limit of the hot side of the turbo before you reach the cold side. So if you're doing that, 
that's a situation where a more exhaust flow, and now in this, in this case, a T6, is definitely going to help you out. But as we see in this range, in the 1,000 horsepower, you can use either one. So I would get the more responsive of the two, and I would go with the T4. Let's get to our conclusion. I'm not sure why I'm always in such a big hurry to get to the conclusion where well, there's always more data to talk about. So this was the same motor, but it actually had a slightly different turbo. We also ran an S475, but I wanted to show you guys what happens when we change the timing because a lot of guys have to run lower octane fuel. Some guys want to run pump gas. Some guys run, want to run E85. Some guys run a mixture of race gas and, and pump gas or add octane booster, those kind of things. So I wanted to show you what happens when we change the timing on one of these turbo motors and we did this at a very low boost pressure so these are all timing numbers that you might be able to run on pump gas although 24 degrees at the power peak might be a little bit much for pump gas but it shows you what happens if you have to lower the timing for lower octane fuels basically how much power you're giving away so this is all good information this was our test run with the s475 the air to water intercooler and we ran this thing with 18 degrees of timing and for this test we basically ran 18 degrees everywhere i just put 18 degrees all the way across when we do these turbo motors i don't normally do that usually there is less timing at the at the torque peak there will be less timing below the torque peak and then more power up near the power peak we usually put a curve in it but in this case we had a low enough boost we had an intercooler we also had good gas in this so we didn't have to worry about hurting anything i want to show you what happens basically everywhere when we change the timing so this was with 18 degrees this is at about eight and a half pounds this thing made 607 horsepower and 559 foot pounds and here's what happened when we went up two degrees of timing. So it likes more timing. <laughs> it's burning more of the available fuel and making more power. The boost didn't go up. It's the same because that's set by the wastegate. But our power went up to 623 horsepower. Peak torque was up to 572 foot pounds. And as we do, we added two more degrees and again, more power, uh, nice little railroad tracks. Um, we've got 641 horsepower. Peak torque was 581 foot-pounds. And then our final uh, timing a jump another 2 degrees to 24 degrees. Peak power is up at 656 foot-pounds. And the interesting thing, if you look down low, you'll see we're starting to gain less power, which is why we do a curve. Um, you, the power gains are usually greater out at the power peak from timing. Um, so usually we have less timing down low on the load in here near 3000 RPM or so. We would have less timing at the torque peak and then we would have more timing. These values like 24 degrees would be more common out at the horsepower peak and less at the torque peak because that's usually where you're going to kind of get detonation. The torque peak and below stuff is kind of the critical area where you want less timing. And even if it does gain more power like this, um, the chances of detonation are much higher with more timing there. You're probably not going to rattle the thing out near the power peak, but you definitely will near the torque peak or down below if you can get this kind of a stationary load, which is not a good idea on the, on the engine dyno. That's the other reason that we take timing away is because we, on the engine dyno, we kind of have an artificial load. We load it there and wait a second or so for it to stabilize, and then we release it, and you just never see that really out on the street anywhere where you're <laughs> kind of power breaking it at wide open throttle at full boost and full timing at 3000 RPM or so. That just never happens. So that's why we, we also, it's a safety factor for us to take timing away there. But this is what happens when you add timing. So you'll know that, hey, if I have to run only 18 degrees of timing because I have a lower octane fuel, this was what would happen. Now we can get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what did we learn from this comparison on our six liter between the BorgWarner S480 T4 turbo and the BorgWarner S480 T6 turbo, besides the fact that Richard apparently likes to argue with himself. Well, in this test, it shows us that in this power range, in the 1,000 horsepower power range, the T4 turbo works just fine. So does the T6 turbo. Now, here's where the thing comes into play, as we've covered many, many times. On a smaller motor, use the smaller hot side. A T4 is more than enough for most 1,000 horsepower applications. If you're stepping up to a larger or larger size motor, like a 6 liter or even stroker variant of a 6 liter, you need the bigger hot side. You'll have higher back pressure with the bigger motor than you will on the smaller motor. If you, all you're doing is looking to make 1,000 horsepower, an S480 is more 
more than big enough. In fact, an S475 is probably also more than big enough, which we ran a bunch of testing on in this series as well. But the S480, if you're looking to max it out on a 6 liter, the T6 hot side probably is going to work out a little bit better. Armature holder guys, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Don't argue with yourself, and I'll keep testing.